In the previous section we've set up development environment for Angular and Laravel. In this video we're going to start developing Angular part of our application. We'll start by creating register page. Then we'll proceed to creating login page. At the end we'll create a social feed page. In this video we're going to create register page. First we're going to dive into design details which you're going to see in a minute. Then we'll create representation of our user that's going to be signed up. Later we will bind form input to TypeScript variables. And at the end we'll prepare post request with registering our user. For this page we are using a combination of Bootstrap 4 and Angular material. For now our register page is an app component. However, we don't want that. Register page should be on its own URL, like slash register. So, first step would be to create separate register page. We need to install router in our application. Here we need to import router module and routes type from Angular router. First thing, we import routes. Then we import router module. Now we can define routes of our application. App routes is going to be simple array of type routes. It's going to contain objects with two properties. First property is path. Path in case of register would be simply register. Then we need to specify component. But first we need to create it. So Let's open terminal in this location. And here let's run ngg component. G stands for generate. And let's generate register component. Our register component has been created. We can see new folder is added here. Our app module has been created, but we are now currently editing it. So let's import register component manually. We need to compare it. And let's make sure we override these changes. Okay, it's done. Now we can pass our register component as a component for register path. Now we can hide terminal. And now we can add router to our modules. It's added somewhere here. And we need to call for root method. And first, as you can see here, we need to pass object of type routes. So let's pass our local variable with the list of routes. And second argument would be config. For debugging purposes, we're going to Enable tracing, as you can see here in this very helpful documentation. We also get very nice syntax suggestions in Visual Studio Code. So we're going to set this to true. One more thing we need to do with register component is also adding it to declarations. This should be complete setup for app module. But in our application, when we are on index route, we still get register route displayed. So let's move code responsible for rendering this register form from app component to its own register component. Our code is lying in app component HTML. We need to move this whole code to register component. Here we can paste it. Now, if we go to our application, we can see that it renders empty page when we are on index route. So let's try to go to register page. And it also renders nothing. Why is that? It's because we need to tell Angular where we want our routes to be rendered. Basically, there's a component called router outlet, which specifically tells Angular where it should render our currently active component. So let's go to app component. And here in app component, we can use router outlet component. When our file is saved, we can go to our application. And we can see that now for register route, it correctly renders our register component. 
So now let's see what happens when we go to index page. Nothing is rendered and actually it's the behavior that we expect right now. It's because currently we are creating register route and we are focused on that part. To not give users bad experience of our site, let's create redirect. Basically, when user will enter this index route, he is going to be redirected to the only existing route, which is now register. So let's go to app module TypeScript with our routes definition. And here, let's create another route. Here we need to say that for empty path, which is index, we want user to be redirected to register path. We also need to prefix this with a slash. Next thing we need to do is to set path match to full. Now let's go to application. And we attempted to visit index, but we are redirected to register route, which is what we wanted. Now let's try to prepare method which for data we input, for example, this data. And when user presses register, this data is sent to our API. Our API isn't ready yet, but we can prepare for this and the Angular part right now. So let's look at HTML of our register form. So here is our register form. We have three inputs inside three form fields. Let's try to bind this data to some variables in our register component TypeScript file so we can later send this data to our backend. First, let's create user model for our data. Let's create new folder called entities. And in this folder called entities, let's create new file called user TypeScript. Here we can define our TypeScript class. So let's create user class. We're going also to export it. And here we can create some properties for this user. For example, first name, which is going to be a string. Last name, also a string. Email, also a string and a password. This is also a string. These properties should be sufficient for the beginning. However, we also need to add a constructor, so it's easy to initialize a new user. Let's go to our register component TypeScript file. Here, let's import our user model. And here in ng-on-init, let's set model property of this component to new user. So first, let's define this model property. Now, in ng-on-init, let's set model to new instance of user. However, let's go to user and make sure that our constructor parameters are optional. Okay, using TypeScript, we have made our arguments optional. Now, to bind to properties of this user, we need to import forms module in our app module TypeScript file. So we need to import forms module from Angular forms. And now we need to import our forms module. Now we should be able to use ng-model directive in our register component. So, for example, here for our first name input, we can add ng-model directive. And here we have our JavaScript expression. In this case, it's going to evaluate to our model dot first name property of user. Because of the specifics of Angular and how it handles forms and validations, we need to also add name attribute. Now let's add remaining password field. And also let's add ng-model directives to the remaining fields. And now let's add click handler to our register button click. Here we need to create our click handler first. So let's add method called submit handler. 
And here, for now, let's try to alert properties of user. OK, and now let's add our submit handler to form on the left. And here, let's fill first name. And let's say email. Now let's press register. And we can see we get an alert box with our user data field. Of course, we don't want to display alert box, but we want to send a request to our backend. This was just for testing purposes, so we can see that our user data is bound correctly. Our register component probably shouldn't have the concrete logic how to register a user. Instead, we can abstract this to new service, for example, called auth service. Auth stands for authentication. So let's create a new service. Here we can run ngg, ng generate, obviously, service auth. And our service has been successfully created. We can close the console. And now we can go to our app module TypeScript. And here in providers section, we need to import our service. So let's go to top of this file and let's import our service. Here it is, our service. And we need to grab a class. Yes, our service. And now it needs to be specified here. Okay. We can actually pick the definition of our service. We can see currently is just a file which imports injectable annotation or some call this decorator, but it's basically just a TypeScript class. So it's going to expose some methods. For example, we obviously want to add register method to it at some point later. For now, let's leave it unimplemented. Okay, so now let's go to our register component. And here let's import our auth service class, just like we did in app module. Actually, we can leave this to our code editor. For example, look at this. In our constructor, we need to accept auth service class object. So let's create this. It's going to be of type auth service. So here we get an error, but we also see the hint here and we can click it and it auto suggests us to import auth service from our file auth service. So I think we should do this. So it might be actually easier than writing our import line ourselves. So let's click this and we can see our import line magically appeared. One thing we could do is maybe switch this quotation marks so we have the one convention across our whole project. However, now we should be able to use auth service, which is going to be provided to this component by Angular. So in submit handler, let's call auth service instead. Register. And to our register method of auth service, let's pass our user model. And now in our auth service, we need to change our register method. So here in register method, it's going to accept user. We can also import it automatically. And this service is going to depend on HTTP service. So first we need to add HTTP module to our app module TypeScript. So we need to import HTTP client module from Angular command HTTP. Then we need to add this module to our already existing modules. And now in our auth service, we can depend on the service. We also need to import it. For the sake of comfort when interacting with HTTP client methods, let's also import rxjs to promise in our main TypeScript file. So after hammer.js, let's use this code rxjs slash add slash operator slash to promise. Now let's go back to our auth service. 
And now let's try to post data of our user. As you can see, here are the methods of HTTP client module and we want post. First argument is URL we want to post. For now, let's try to post to simple URL like API slash register. Our second argument, body, is going to be user and then should come user data. So for now, let's just put user here. Another thing we need to do is to add subscribe to our post call. It's because post returns observable. And observable is lazy. It means that it won't fire this request unless we call subscribe on it. This is concept of reactive programming. Now let's go to our application and see the results of our work. Let's fill this data. Now let's open developer tools and network tab so we can get a look at this request which is going to be fired. Now let's go to network tab. And here let's press register. And we can see request was fired. Let's look closer at this. And here in request payload, we can see data of our user. So we can see it was correctly sent. When our API is ready, we will be able to do more. But now it's all we can do. In this video, we've created register page.